Live from the Computer History Museum in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's the Cube, covering food IT, fork to farm. Brought to you by Western Digital. Hi, and welcome back. I'm Lisa Martin with the Cube. We are at the Farm IT event. This is an incredible opportunity to talk with um, folks that are experts in agriculture, food and agriculture, uh, academia, farmers, producers, those all across the food chain. The theme of this event is Fork to Farm, and I'm excited to be joined by my next two guests. We have Dan Sunke, the Director of Sustainable Agriculture from Campbell Soup, welcome. Thank you. And you can't see this, but Dan has Campbell Soup tennis shoes on, and they're <laughs> awesome. And David Sipniewski, the founder and CEO of Athena Intelligence. Thank Welcome, you. gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Good so to be here. So this has been before we went on. We were kind of talking about kind of my thoughts in ag tech, and this is a really interesting and unique opportunity for the Cube to really look at the influences of big data and, and analytics, cloud computing, open source software, blockchain, hmm. and how this all can be very influential across the food chain. And, you know, from the events theme perspective, it's really been a lot this morning talking about the tech-enabled food consumer really driving a lot of this change expectation-wise. But Dan, first question to you, knowing, growing up on Campbell Soup as a kid, um, founded in 1869, okay. how is Campbell Soup taking action to implement and not only support, support sustainable agriculture, but also where, what were the drivers? Well, we definitely see consumers driving interest in where the food comes from, um, where ingredients that go into Campbell's soup come from. Um, we, a few years ago, decided that we wanted to be a company that makes real food that matters for life's moments. So that's our mission, that's our purpose. Um, and so we want to connect to consumers with the information that supports that claim, that um, the food is trustworthy, that it's, um, it's it's authentic and that it resonates with the emotional side of how it's consumed and families and and uh, the the, ma the moments that matter. And and also probably from a brand perspective, this is a historic brand in, in the United States, and Very that's probably so. quite important to. Meet oh, absolutely, those needs. we want to be the most transparent food company. We want um, to be open and honest with our consumers and uh, satisfy their desire for real food. So talk to us about kind of the genesis of this sustainability um, in agriculture at Campbell. When did that start? Um, and, and really, besides the consumers, maybe some on the customer side, who was sure. really driving this initiative? Well, well we, we, we drive it internally. So six years ago, we decided to um, venture into sustainable agriculture in a formal way. We did a stakeholder assessment. So we talked to cu customers, we talked to investors, we talked to farmers, suppliers, um, folks inside the company, outside the company, North America, Europe, Australia, and asked them a series of questions and said, where should we focus? What are the crops? What are the subject areas we should focus on in agriculture sustainability? And we came up with um, a focus on tomatoes and other vegetables that um, people think of when they think of Campbell Soup. We're largely a vegetable nutrition and whole grain nutrition company, so we, we wanted to focus there. Um, and we focused on water, fertilizer, greenhouse gases, um, soil and pesticides. So that was our focus area. And we really took a, a measure to manage approach. So intentionally going to farmers, starting with tomatoes, with a limited set of questions that um, capture a lot of information and would be information growers would have. So we asked them, how much water did you apply to make the crop? How much fertilizer did you use? What was the irrigation system? Um, what's, what are some of the decision tools that you use to make informed decisions? And so um, we started collecting that data. Um, we also started capturing the geographic locations of the fields, believing that the technology would come to enable us to uh, put that together. And lo and behold, fast forward five years, now we have five years of data. We've tracked some really great stuff that our farmers have done. Um, for example, last year, water use per pound of tomato grown was down by 20% over our first year of tracking that data. Wow huge gains in uh, efficiency and uh, you know, especially since it's California crop, um, that was in the period of a five year drought. Right. So very encouraging to see that growers can do that kind of thing and 
very proud of our growers for Absolutely. doing Absolutely, and on the technology side, so we've got David here, Athena Intelligence. Talk to us a little bit about the genesis of <laughs> Athena Intelligence and how you're working in partnership with Campbell Soup. Sure, so I, I've got a storied background in agricultural tech, I've worked with production growers, ag tech companies, processors like Campbell's and others. Um, and several years ago, I, I kind of realized the fact that uh, while all of this technology from Silicon Valley and around the world is starting to kind of make its way into agriculture, um, an assumption that everyone makes is that the data is ready to be used in some sort of technology. Right. All right, so kind of the, the running joke in the field is that, you know, that a lot of technology is built, a lot of solutions that are desperately looking for a problem to solve. Uh. And <clears throat> the problem, while it sounds simple, is not so easy to <laughs> put together, but the problem is that as Campbell Soup, for example, is collecting all of that data, um, you know, the entire industry has never really been familiar with the structure of how to actually use data in any kind of meaningful data science or analytical way. And so just being able to compile it all from various different formats and sources um, was a burden. So while you had all this data, it actually couldn't be used at all. And so um, Athena Intelligence was about um, basically uh, me coming to the realization and collaborating with Dan, Campbell's been a great partner, who was saying, you know, we're going to solve that one problem, the, the unglamorous, the unsexy <laughs> problem of uh, building a piece of technology which can efficiently and automatically begin to uh, clean up and normalize and standardize uh, data sets from multiple different uh, sources. And, and we're talking origins. about like data from weather sources, sensors, right. satellite imagery. So it's a, it's a fusion of public and private data. So okay. the public data, Everything from uh, uh, satellite imagery to soil to weather stations, uh, river flows, um, 98 different attributes of the weather and, and, and water re uh, related data. And then of course all of the uh, private data, both Campbell's internal processing data. And then all the data that they're collaborating with their, their suppliers. So it's a pretty broad assortment which comes from, I mean the formats are everything from a handwritten notebook to PDF to Excel to wow. it's <laughs> yeah. it's all over the board. So this is really big data and analytics, being able to, yes. to bring and aggregate data from different sources, facilitate data discovery. Mm -hmm. We're making data efficient right now because the problem is that um, it's so uh, it, it's such a laborious effort. You know, ninety percent of the time people are putting in just trying to clean it and organize right. it. Right. Um, leaving very little time to be able to analyze it, let alone make any decisions or collaborate on it. So we're addressing that 90% of the time that people spend on trying to put this stuff together in the first place. Okay, so, so Dan, walk us through kind of a, a use case example of how you're implementing or have implemented sure. Athena intelligence software and what some of the outcomes have been so far. Right, so the, the goal has been to take the quality data that comes into our um, systems, and, and that is one area where we do use <laughs> data historically quite mm -hmm. a, a bit. We, we have tons of data on every load of tomatoes that comes into our processing plants. Um, but then we're marrying that data to the publicly mm -hmm. available weather, soil, water data, and the data that the growers report on sustainability practices. And the goal is to find the win, win, win. The win for the environment, the win for the farm profitability, and the win for Campbell Soup quality and, and sustainability drivers as well. And the example that we're, we're currently pursuing mm -hmm. is tomato solids. So that's an obscure term for most people, but it's an it's mm -hmm. industry measurement of how much sugar is in the tomatoes, basically. Okay. Um, the solids of the tomatoes coming in affect how they process into our ingredients, the higher solids, the easier they are for us to process, and the less energy it requires for us to do that. So it's a sustainability win as well. We already pay growers for higher solids. We know a few things that can generate higher solids on the farm, but we think there are more pieces of information that have been hiding in that big data set. So uh, can we tease out what soils produce higher solids, or what irrigation practices drive higher solids, or whatever it is. We're, <laughs> so we're in the process right now. Um, we've got a project going between our research innovation fund, Athena, and that's the target that we're going after this summer is to dig into five years of data and find that win. Wow, so. so it sounds like Athena Intelligence has really enabled Campbell Soup to become a data-driven company. Uh, well, we certainly are a data-driven company, but this is 
extending the reach of the data outside the four walls of and our factory. And in, also into the farmer, so you're really enabling farm, yeah. farmers to embrace data, mm -hmm. evaluate what they have. Have you seen any, so one of the things that we were talking about earlier today or was being talked talk about was the labor shortages, yeah. as well as attrition. So you mentioned you know, things in ledgers and, and hard, right. hard copy. Are you also seeing an influence maybe that Campbell's having to your farmers becoming much more um, uh, less paper driven and, and maybe more modern in terms of the way that they're collecting and storing data? Well, I, I can't say that we can take credit for that, but we certainly want to be one of the many voices at events such as this one to, call, to, to, to be a, a, a beacon calling the industry to solve this problem. David really m mentioned it. The challenge is growers don't have the resources to capture data easily. If they were, you know, if, if that was their mindset, they'd probably be accountants and not farmers, right? <laughs> so farm, they have, you know, they're in farming for the, all the attributes of a farm lifestyle, not a data capture lifestyle. Right. So capturing that farm data, making it easy for them to get the data into systems that they can then use mm -hmm. is one of my passions, right? right. Um, a lot of companies are out there saying, oh, we can create a platform that will help Campbell's get information out of the farms. And I keep telling them, no, <laughs> if you create the system that makes it easier for farmers to use their own data to get more efficient okay. and more profitable, they'll put the data in. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's not so you think that's really where the sweet spot is, is the and, next step and is really... And that's how we drive sustainability. Okay. Because if, they, if the tools can help them with the data to make more informed decisions, that's that's what we want to get out of our sustainability programs. It's not just data for reports, say for Campbell's. Right. It's, it's how do we drive progress on the farm, and we do that by creating the systems that everybody can use more easily. Well, it's so neat to hear that a company that so many of us know and I've grown up with has evolved so much to be um, very focused and have sustainability really as the core, and it's also great to know that there are technologists out there that have that ag tech experience that are enabling companies to leverage the power of big data. So gentlemen, I want to thank you so much for stopping by the Cube today and sharing your insights with us. We wish you the best of luck and look forward thank to you. seeing what's hap what happens in the next few years. Thank you. Thank you very much. very much. My pleasure. And we want to thank you for watching the Cube again. I'm Lisa Martin, we are at the Farm IT event from Fork to Farm, or Food IT event. Uh, we will be back with some more great guests, so stick around.